Let us all that we can to build a better future. I want to give a shout out to everyone that's joining us here for this live stream as well. Shout out to our moderators keeping the peace. Today is Hard Lens Media's fifth anniversary. So I think with that being said, I got the stuff. Let's go ahead and get the Do stuff. So, so here we go. Let's let's get ourselves a poor phase for poor phase a uh, little glass too. There we go. So here we go. Bottle. Well, open open a bottle. That's right. We're popping champagne here. We're popping champagne here, folks. All right. Today is Hard Lens Media's fifth anniversary. April Fool's Day. This is our official canon day because in all reality, when we talk about Hard Lens Media um, and its origin or how it got started, the real correct answer is, well, what iteration are you talking about? Because there's been many ways Hard Lens Media got started. We got started on the streets of Chicago. We, we got started, you know, radio, being on two radio stations, public access television. Um, you know, we managed to get onto YouTube. Um, own ourselves a professional YouTube studio, or get, get ourselves our first professional studio way back at the old spot, and now here we are. So let's talk about how Hard Lens Media got started. In January of 2017, after all, all dreams begin, I get a phone call from my colleague, Daniel Lufker. He says, Kit, I got an idea for something, but we're in a race against 100,000 other people. We haven't trained for this race. We haven't prepared ourselves in it. And there's a chance that we may not succeed. But I think we have what it takes. And I got this plan. Are you in? Now, this sounds like a crazy idea. And I'm crazy enough to go for it. I'm like, hell yeah, I'll do it. Let's do this. Because when we covered, when we were first really kind of getting started with media and stuff, you know, we had a little little side project way back in 2016. You know, we covered the disaster at the Democratic Convention in 2016. And, you know, the one thing I talked to Daniel about ever since we covered the Democratic Convention where Bernie Sanders cucked out, we were there in Philly. It was a nightmare. Um, I said to Daniel, there's no independent media network here in Chicago. I mean, TYT did nothing. The young, you know, no one that was part of any kind of media network that was had a, a social media standing had anything here in Chicago. And they didn't really talk about the disaster at the convention. And I, for one, wanted to change that. And so did Daniel. Ooh, oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. Bring this back. Yeah. He had, he had a pop. Well, pop of bottles here, folks. We celebrate. We celebrate. So there we go. So. We came up with this idea of creating Hard Lens Media. So what Daniel and I did was we we worked harder, not smarter. But I think here's the thing. Now looking back at it, I mean, we were just getting into the game, hitting the concrete hard. We were doing stories, covering activists, organizers, campaign events, in the streets with a Galaxy S7 cell phone. This is a Galaxy S9 right here. We had a Galaxy S7 cell phone, and the thing is, video quality, audio quality wasn't all that great, but we had to learn everything. Daniel had to learn how to use OBS, and not OBS, but um, uh, Adobe Premiere. There we go. See, I'm getting senile in my old age. Adobe Premiere. I had to learn how to, well, be a reporter and a host and everything else. Perfecting the craft, trying to do everything I can to at least do a good show and ask good questions. April 1st was our first real reporting that we did on the ground. Now, a lot of our original reporting was done on Facebook. And, of course, Facebook, like, oh, my God, oh, my God, look at that. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait, so there we go. We... um. We, we were doing a lot of uploading onto Facebook. So, again, Facebook was our primary source back then. And since then, since that time, we, we also realized that every original reporting we did on Facebook was always being censored. But after we posted, like, an article from MSNBC or CNN, it got, like, a thousand likes on it, which was stupid in my opinion. Then our friend Lainey Peterson got us in the door for our first radio station. To get to get up to radio, Daniel, through his ingenuity, managed to uh, get us onto a second radio station. Mm -hmm. And then, with before that, we were on got us on uh, Can TV. Well, Can, Can TV uh, that, that was that was the thing I was looking into because I was working mm -hmm. at Costco at the time. I was but like, we got wait, the Can TV came about roughly the same time as the first radio station. 
It did? Mm-hmm. Because that's what we were, there my thought was, I don't know if other people are going to watch this, but I know we're going to have a lot easier time getting people on the show if they think they're going to be on TV. Yeah, yeah. And so I was I, uh, like, okay, so can TV, I like, and I decided to take, and by the way, cheers. Cheers. Salute. Thanks. Cheers to you, my friend. There you go. Cheers. cheers. All right. There we go. Mm. Mm, good selection. Yeah. Oh, man, it is good. Yeah. It is good. Mm. Mm. Oh, right. Because people, that's right. You guys can't see the bottle because it's green. Oh, that's right. <laughs> it's a green bottle. <laughs> it's a green. Oh, so. Oh, wow. Oh, that is so funny. See? Oh, look at that. Oh, it's it's an invisible. What is what is Daniel Lupker holding? <laughs> <laughs> yes. And yes, Anna Jackson, red solo cup with champagne. We don't have enough. I mean, like we're still. We're still getting by. Yeah, look, we we, we, we got a budget. It's not. It's is, no longer a shoestring this budget. Is, but this there is. Go. It's like two shoestrings, maybe three. Mm-hmm. Like this is our budget. We could spend is like a brute and a, and a and a tart and a tart cake. So there we go. And a tart cake is actually pretty delicious. It looks very good. Mm-hmm. Said high compliments mm-hmm. earlier. So already, I mean, oh wow, that's really good. Mm. So, anyways, uh, since then, you know, we 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 had. A TV station, a, a TV show for three seasons. We're on two radio stations. And, you know, the thing is, but start, I, starting up this independent media network. I think even more so on that, like you were saying before, the first two years were really us realizing and knowing and walking into it, we have no idea what we're doing. Yeah. I and mean, let's just brute force our way through that process. But when we got out of those first two years, we knew a lot of what we were doing. I mean, just in terms of like what we accomplished in our first two years, starting literally with a smartphone and then going from there, a smartphone and a tripod. Um, like I remember the first, like I felt like the first six months or so we couldn't even, um, we didn't even get a shotgun, um, a shotgun mic, a shotgun mic that we, that we couldn't hold. We didn't have the right pieces to have it on. So I remember I had duct tape on it to hold it in place. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So it was literally first two years were about 125 organizations interviewed of that 500 people interviewed within those organizations. Mm -hmm. And we put out a huge amount of content that no one saw. Yeah, we did a documentary series in Indiana. We've covered so many other breaking stories about lead in Chicago's drinking water. I have about 700 interviews under my belt so far. Yeah, and that that is our history. Yeah, yeah, and Yeah. and so, but the thing is, but during that, and this is before we did the transition to YouTube, before we got into your uh, to your old place, your mm-hmm. your home mm-hmm. we, that, that that we were at. Mm-hmm. Um, I want everyone to know that we dealt with a lot of uh, pushback from people. Oh yeah, a lot of individuals who said you can't do it. You guys will always be the dudes on the outside looking in. No one will take you seriously. You can't shoot here. We don't really want you around. We're glad you're here, but you're going to do what we say. Or, or, or where are you getting your funding from? Yeah, where are you getting your funding from? It's 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 us. I work at Costco. Daniel worked at Lyft at the time. Mm. You know, I mean, it, it was us. And then there were other individuals who had the audacity to say, here's how you should run your show. Or we had others who were bold enough to say, you know something, Daniel and Kit? Maybe you two should step down and I should take charge of everything that you've built. Because you two just maybe, maybe, maybe I could do it better. You're, you're too male. Yeah. To do that yeah. person was very funny. Yeah, that, that was funny. That one was really funny. I, like, you know, I, you know, I hear, let me, let me show you how it should well, be done. The amount of people who are trying to help us by taking everything from us, it was amazing. Yeah. And we've surpassed all of them. Mm-hmm. And it's funny when we have people try and tell us, like, here's how you need to – because here's one thing. I will never tell anyone how they should run their show or I will tell them how to run their business. That was the most insulting thing. But when we decided to finally leave radio because we were dealing with radio managers that, did, one, didn't know what they were doing or, two, were extremely hostile. Or very bipolar in their hostility. Yes. We made the decision. With the one – the old radio manager who's like – not like we, – we knew like I, literally after we got – we left. I did a breakdown. I was like, yeah, this guy's going to run out of money within, well, the amount of time he did. Now he doesn't have a yeah. radio station anymore. Because he doesn't have a pot to piss in or a can to shit yeah. in. So and, there you go. But he was like, he would tell me, I'm, you know, you're one of the most proud stations we have here. Uh, no one else has brought in such high-profile individuals and then flipped to, 
Um, you lost a run check, which he lost, which is the big disagreement that got us to leave. Which yeah. is very funny because I was because I remember we had the back and forth, and I was like, "Hey, man, just tell us you lost the little check. I'll send you another one. No issue. I just got to yeah. cancel the old one." Yeah. But that was that was a horrendous act of me to mm-hmm. say, "Hey, can we just make sure we know what's going on?" Yeah, and so we made the decision to go to Daniel's apartment. And well, we our- had that temporary place that was pretty cool. The other- oh yeah, yeah, the music place. Yeah, right nearby. Yeah. yeah. Oh, they, they. You know what? They were actually a lifesaver. Mm. They. 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 Yeah, yeah. 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 They were. They were actually a really good spot. They were really nice to us. They were. They were really, yeah. really good to us. Um, I remember these people. Yeah. Um. And and then we did eventually stop doing stuff for Can TV. But side note: now we're doing stuff for Can TV again. So we're mm-hmm. back to doing a show on Can TV, only except far more professional than it was at the last place. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got first into YouTube in 2019 when we were at Daniel's old spot. And during that time, we were building up our capital and our resources to finally get our first professional studio space way up on the north side. Which is the old one with the brick background that we... Yeah, yeah. so north side, that way, kind of that way I'm pointing, um, yeah, right off by the, by the old Brown Line Kimball Station. So for those of you who remember, you remember the bus that used to show up mm-hmm. all the time there? Mm-hmm. So there we go. But eventually at that spot, you know, during that time, then... 2020 was when we were first hit with a shadow ban, and then we got not one, but six strikes in uh, by YouTube. No. All of them BS, by the way. But over that time, do you want to know who stood by us always? All of you. All of you made this show happen. And through our sheer determination, our collective work together, we actually did something. We bought this spot right here, a fifth floor view of the city of Chicago. Now we're on Rockfin, Odyssey, Twitch, YouTube. We have another YouTube channel, Chicago Corner. We have the studio, 99 Perspectives. We're building a radio station, World Perspectives Radio. We're back on Can TV, And this is our fifth year. And to all those people who said we couldn't make it, well, <clears throat> how do you like us now? Daniel, it's amazing away. what Hard Lens is able to pull off with the budget we have. Mm-hmm. It really is. Mm. This is a really good cake, by the way. So yeah, it's a good choice. Mm-hmm. Big mm. brain mentality right here. And so yeah, it's again like I said, we started. When I called him, I had just gone through like you know what could we do that would make a difference in the world, and mm-hmm. I realized there just isn't media anymore. There's no local media; it's all been bought up. And so that's what I was saying to Ken. It's like you know we're going to run a a, a race against a hundred thousand people, and we haven't trained. Mm-hmm. And I knew that, you know, someone's going to fill in this gap. This is, you know, I'm a big fan of history. Kid is as well. And we've gone through periods like this in history where, like, in the 20s is the most specific time where with what happened and the distribution and who owned and who didn't own um, media. And at some point, there's two choices. Either big media collapses under its way of its own ineptitude or something else happens if they're broken up or something. Mm-hmm. In which case, we will be able to sally forth, or we're at the end of time, and it really doesn't matter. We might as well do something fun. Yeah, but and, it's not yeah. the end yet. No. Even though the world looks like it's ending, it's not but the we've, end yet. Like, that's the thing. We've diversified so much so that we're not – like anything that happens right now, like if YouTube decided right now today – that um, Hard Lens wouldn't be able to operate on its site. We'd obviously, the biggest thing we'd lose is a lot of the audience that hasn't already converted over to the other platforms. But it would, um, like, at this point, income-wise, YouTube represents, uh, Hard Lens YouTube, I should say, represents like 5% Mm -hmm. of our our revenue. So it's like, okay, YouTube, do your thing. We're ready. Right. We're prepared to take every direction we can. That's we're moving in every direction we can. That's why we're working on uh, television, while we're building our own radio station, while we're investing in all this other stuff, while we're working in client services. We want to be the authors of our destiny. We, we want you guys to be the moderators. Right. And also, uh, where's Kit's bottle? Here we go. I mean, this one right here. I don't, I don't see it. Oh, where, I don't know what you're talking about. At? Where's it at? Oh, no. It's the city the city of Chicago right There's here. No, I don't know what you're holding. You're trying to hold what, something. What, what, what am I looking at? Oh, no. But yeah, no, uh, but seriously, folks, uh, I'm seeing Miguel H. saying thank you and congratulations. We got Anna Jackson. Anna Jackson, yes. So these are red solo cups. So... You know, it's all good. We got Lucky Burrito in the house. We got also a Dingo ate my baby. I haven't seen you in a while, my friend. Good to see you here. 
car, pizza and champagne. No, it's a tart cake and champagne. Um, Kit's not a fan of pizza anymore. Uh, Bryce Smith, the hood approves. Thank you so much. Uh, let's see who else we got. Ilinar get, doing some cheers. Thank you so much. Uh, we got Lilo Los Troy says you earned it. Hardlands Media. Uh, let's see uh, do, 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 do. who else we got here. We got so many. Let's see. We got E Heller in the house. Uh, Max uh, Gattaca says keep up the, uh, uh, keep it up so far. Great work. I'm happy for you guys. Uh, it, it's you know what? It's been a journey, and I think the the greatest uh, the greatest what? thing we could do. Uh, great. Know, we'll call it yeah. What's like the like? What's the three most difficult things we've been through with hard lens? In your mind? I mean, that's the thing. It's like when we're on camera, it works and it's good. Okay. But there's so much crap we that we've gone through. Like honestly. All right. Um, I'm just gonna say the year 2020 that we had to go through. That was mm -hmm. our first shadow ban and our first strike. Uh, what a lot of you don't know is that's when we were also building 99 perspectives. We had eight clients using our studio. We lost them all because of the pandemic. Uh, also, the shadow ban systematically gave us a big collective gut strike. If the shadow ban and strike yeah, never helps. happened, I want to explain mm -hmm. why we were why why the show is significant. The reason why we've been doing the show is so that we could bring more attention to our original reporting. Since then, the idea of building Harlan's media teams to go into Indiana, Michigan, Wisconsin, that's been derailed. Uh, it's yeah. not it's not off the table. It's just it's going to take time to rebuild was, that because because yeah. because if, if things kept going the way they were from 2019. We we would have like reporters out there in the field, but since then, what you that that gut check that YouTube did to us in 2020. So 2020 was a, just to give you an idea, guys, of how terrible it was. We went from we were growing. I mean, if if you look on our social blood, you'll find that point. We were growing rapidly, expanding. We were hitting a point where we were getting three or four hundred subscribers a day yep. for a good period of time, and we were getting. You know, twenty-five to fifty thousand uh, views a day on the channel. We were really taking off, and so we had reinvested back into the company, bought a lot of equipment to make sure all that worked and everything of that nature. And then it was the start of the the great sickness, and within a month, our uh, our revenue was cut. Um, this is when we were really relied on YouTube for free HLM um, uh, uh, revenue. Um. The revenue went from about 3K per month and to where it's at now, which is like 500. Mm -hmm. And that happened, and our viewership went from like literally half a million unique people a month to maybe 100,000 views a month, which is, you know, yeah. 20,000 unique. And that hit us within a month. Yep. And then it kept going for six months straight. Yep. And we had just gotten our first studio when that happened. Yep. And um, it's kind of ironic that we're repeating a version of that. Yeah. This year. But I think the difference between this year and, and mm -hmm. that time was that, you know, we we didn't really have like such a great team. Like here's the thing, like like we had some issues. Mm -hmm. And so I would say not another point in time, but I would say individuals that tried to derail or just try to screw us over. Yeah, we had a lot of issues. A, with lot, people. Yeah, a lot of issues with people. And that's all I want to say. Like, like what was a significant point in time? Because like, it, it was it was a nightmare. I yeah. mean, again, it's like a lot of the stuff we didn't we didn't talk about because there's really no point to mention to you guys when it was happening. Yeah. But it was like I think I, was, I think so, you're right. That that six month period in that shadow was probably the lowest. Yeah. So so 2020. So 2020 was one point. Another point where it was low was this was when we started in 2017, when it came down to be just you, me, and Lainey. Remember? Mm -hmm. And then, and of course, Lainey had to leave early on because she had all the responsibilities to take care of. But then when it, became, it when it became you, me, and Lainey, like when because there was there's been a lot of iterations of the team. When it became you and me, it was just like, oh, okay, it's just us. Back where we started. Back where we started from. But we have some more stuff. We had more uh, um, infrastructure laid down. And then a third time, where there was because you, you gave me a challenge for three times. So I'm so I'm, so I'm pulling this out here. This is you're you're you're, you're going to wave this off. I know you will. Okay. All right. It's when we lost that footage from the uh, Indiana Toxic Tour. 
Mm, yeah, I definitely All right, would. Because, because no, you, I because you, 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 you know why it's important? I know Because we caught them doing illegal stuff. I know. I know. We, we caught them doing that. I know. And I want that. Fo- I like. I would really like to see that because that was something that was hurting innocent people. Yeah. And I'm yeah, really I, pissed I, off I, I can see that. why. It, I can see why it's in your top three. Yeah. But I, uh, you, you know why? For me, it's it's, it's too yeah. anecdotal for I know, me. I know. I know. I know. But it's, I think I, I respect it. Every I respect every part of that though. That makes mm-hmm. sense. And that again, that had to. That really was. I would even argue that that was a. A problem with the people we had is it was directly a problem with someone running off with that footage. Yeah, I know. So I mean, yeah, it's like we've it's like we've been through the ringer for this to get to this point, and now that we're here, it's really nice that we're that we're here, even though we're still dealing with YouTube. That's why this stuff doesn't hit us that hard. A high point, you know? Yeah, let's do some high points. Three high points. Number one, always having Norman Keenan, twenty twenty kiddo cat ex vet. Ex Costco guy, there we go. Norman Keenan. Norman Keenan's that guy at the bar. He's been sitting at the Hardlands Media Bar, and he's not going anywhere. Oh yeah, Norman. Norman's, the Norman's guy. our guy. Yeah, Norman's the guy that'll that'll <laughs> shout at you at the bar and then be like, "I didn't say anything." That's right. We love you, Norman, Norman Keenan. I think Norman's literally like the like the first ten people we had regularly watching our live streams. Mm-hmm. So he's like, he's like just Nor- super OG. Norman Keenan. Message redacted. Yeah. There you go. We still got to make that shirt. I've- yeah, we got to make that shirt. Norman Keenan, you're number one. That's why. No, you know another thing, too? I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, going to say. Norman Keenan is highly underrated. There's no question. <laughs> Especially if you don't read his messages soon enough. Yes, you got to capture them. They're gems. They're magnificent. Yeah, he's, he's, I, I don't know if we, I can't remember exactly if we have anyone that regularly watches the show now that was in that first 10 people besides Norman. Carabas had actually commented and said, I'm, I'm, I'm the news crush. Apparently, I'm a news crush. Uh, you know what? Another thing too is, um, it's when uh, I would say that this spot right here is a high point. Getting this, getting this, yeah, or yeah. when it was built. And we'll combine them both okay. together. Getting this and having this built because this is th- since then. Do you have any idea how many people come through that door and their mm. mouths just drop? It's amazing floor? to see. Like it's it's nice to see. And now we got the radio station being built, mm. and then we got the Twitch room, we got the control center right there. I mean, it's 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 great. I mean, I I have to say, getting this spot and building it, even though building it was a nightmare. And I know that you and Faze were here for seventy two. We hours. died. We I mean, we died. We're we're back to life, but we died. Se- seventy two hours building the spot. So no, this no, no. studio. There's a there was a seventy two hour period where we were working nonstop. It was a hundred. Well, over yeah. It was hundred hours. No, no, yeah. well, we, no, no, no. But I'm talking about when you had to rebuild OBS, though. That's well, that's that's, that's, a, that's something. That's a small yeah. component. Yeah. Like me and Faze effectively worked eight hours a day. No, more than that. Like just for for 120 days mm-hmm. from September to the uh, start of January, we were in here basically every day of the week, nonstop. And remember, yeah. remember we kept days were like that was like regular. Yeah, and it's like we just kept looking at each other, like like when do we give up? And we're like, we can't. We're gonna push through this because that was the entire goal. Is we kill ourselves in the short term, which was a, it turned out to be midterm. Um, so that we wouldn't in the long term. The entire idea was to build a spot that had everything for any client to, with that, and any package uh, selection to be able to turn it around in five minutes and have it run smoothly, perfectly, and easily on the back end. And it turns out you need to put in like 4,000 hours to make that happen and a lot of capital to build all this. Because it, remember, it was like that for that first three months, we were literally spending $3,000 a month just furnishing and like making it so like you can't see but there's a sound wall that's all along right here that has an entrance uh that you can walk in and out of very easily just the sound wall just just that that's like six hundred dollars just oh. to make the sound work properly oh, Faze, Faze is gonna go ahead and do something yeah he'll show the the he's, he's gonna zoom out so you can see all this stuff and i'll point it out but it's like it's like that was our stories. It's like we had built everything up to put in the time and the effort we did, and that was thanks to go. you guys to get here. To we here. go. Hang on, there so it there, is. Okay, so yeah, this sound wall right here. These are all the way up here. <laughs> Look at the green screen. Yeah, <laughs> let's pull in a different part of the suit. So just these, like these are like forty pound, but twenty pound blankets. And it took us, and we not. It's not just like getting this stuff. It's that how we've rebuilt the entire setup here. 
uh, eight different times. Yeah. So, like, I'll show you guys this. Watch this. This took us, like, what, like a month to figure out how to do, which was how do we get a full green screen that's out of camera shot that is that one person can put down and take up in about two minutes. So watch this. Okay, hang on. Here we go. Dan, you need my help for anything? No, it's one person. All right, here we go. Okay. Let's go, Ghostbusters. Hang on. Hold on, folks. I'm going to filibuster. Hold on. We got Cool Blue 71, $4.99 Super Chat. Happy fifth anniversary. The older you get, the faster time passes. Oh, boy. You are preaching the truth to the choir. We got, uh, let's see, uh, Steve Cutler says, Facts, fellas. Uh, Valerie Pooster says, I'm a new viewer. Uh, another person said, I learned about Heartlands Media because of Jimmy Dore. Yes, shout out to you, Jimmy. Jimmy from Chicago. Jimmy's number one. Jimmy, shut the fuck Jimmy, shout out to Jimmy. He's doing the show tonight. Be sure to support Jimmy Dore. He's doing been a lot of good stuff, and he's been he's been a real good supporter for Hard Lens Media. Uh, speaking truth to power, uh, yeah, Jimmy Dore is so cool. Uh, Steve Cutler Live says killer production. Lucky Burrito says so awesome. Oh, Lucky Burrito, you're only seeing just a small part of the studio. You haven't seen the Twitch room. We got the radio room. We got the we. Uh, hold on. Tell Convo Couch that we got our own. Convo couch. Yeah, you heard that phase? I, I gave it to them. I was like, yeah, take 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 that. Yeah, yeah, convo couch. We got our we got our own. Okay, let's cut back couch. to that. Look at how cool that is. Look, look how fast I did that. Let's see where's the bottle at. There we go. <laughs> you can't see the bottle still. But like this is where this is the stuff that we killed ourselves over. It's like, hey, how do we do that that I just did? How do I do that? in two minutes it took us a month and, and like a dozen iterations remember before that we had that that pool that pool line yeah, before yeah. that we just tried to pin it up there and that didn't work because the other problem is this entire room we're in we can't affect any of it we can't drill anything we can't no. do any permanent changes no. in the studio space so everything has to be clipped on or use existing start fixtures and so what we ended up with was um what was it? it's actually a flagpole that's holding this entire thing up, and that literally jammed into some recesses into in the ceiling, and then the green screen goes through it. It's clipped in, and then we have this series of. I'll show you again to push to put. If we can flip it to the other camera, so all we have to do to turn this around and put it back up is just do that. Let these come down. Move that over here. That over here. Mm-hmm. Okay. I am so proud of this. That's the good stuff right there. Look at that. There you go. And so if you notice, it goes a little bit low. Mm. So that's why we had to have this little string right here, which his entire job is just to pull that up. Look at that. That's 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 what we do here at the studio. And by the way, Lucky Burrito uh, Pasta has actually seen the studio, but I don't think he saw it at this point. So we actually made some changes when. No, he, he saw it before we were done with it. So yeah. if you flip back, boom, sets back. Boom. Sets and so back. that is literally one component. There are over three dozen components that had to be thought out. To that level mm -hmm. for this space to work properly. So obviously number number one, Norman Keen, because we got matter of fact, Norman Keen, it's all the audience. Number one is the audience we built. That's including you, Norman, so you gotta share with everybody too. But the audience, all of you, our viewers, our subscribers, our Patreon supporters, our moderators, uh, everyone that's been uh, here with Harlands Media, you're you're number one. That's the high yeah. point. Number two is this space because that's five years of hard work from the streets mm -hmm. to here. And you know what number three is? 
the interviews. Mm. Jimmy Dore. You know, my but my first interview was with Dr. Cornell West. I wish to actually do a follow up. That would have been great. That was literally your first interview. Yeah, my yeah, I, I remember, and I found him out of nowhere. This was 2016, before Harlan's Media was even an idea. And I remember speaking to Dr. Cornell West, and all these are, I was the first one to come up to him, and I had, I was so nervous. I was so fucking nervous. And I knew he could tell I was nervous, too. Well, actually, while you're doing that, it's so people are saying that they're like, some people have realized that that's a green screen. By the way, like, remember I said there's all these different components, and there's like a couple dozen of them? The story of us just getting the window to look like that Remember when we started, I had the foolhardy idea in retrospect where I'm like, we have a great view outside. Let's use it. Why else did we move here? And we, while well, you guys that saw the set back in September saw the issue with my vision, mm-hmm. which is we couldn't get it. It just it over the sun would overexpose and we and every time we do it, the sun would change position or a cloud would move in and it would destroy the lighting environment. So. Actually, Faze, could we? I'm gonna move one of the cameras so they can see what we actually do now. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna get up and move the back camera. Right. Yeah, well, then I'm gonna keep on. You talking. keep doing your thing, and then I'll so, come back. So here's. So so here's what happened. So when I'm interviewing Dr. Cornell West, uh, this was 2016 at the uh, fourth, of course, the convention in Philly. Um, I was so nervous. I was so scared. But he, but he, but he, but he, 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 I put his hand on my shoulder and was like, all right, I got you. And I was like, and I, all of a sudden I felt like overconfident. I was like, okay, I got this. I got this. I got this. Wait, who's this? Stranger danger. Is that phase? Oh, I think you might get the last little drop right there, oh, buddy. Perfect. There, there you go. You got the last drop. There you go. Everyone, shout out to phase. Who's been doing phenomenal work here without him. We wouldn't have anything. Wait, ah, Giant Daniel Lucker's head is in the background. What you doing? Get out of there. Get out of there. Anyways. <laughs> Anyways. Um, I, yeah. Yeah. I, I interviewed uh, Dr. Cornel West. And, you know, the thing is, I was the first one to saw him. So I, so I came up to him quickly and Daniel followed me. I was like, uh, Dr. Cornel West, my name is Kit Cabello. And. Uh, well, I was talking to him. Chased by all the mainstream media. No, 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 no. Then the mainstream media found us because first, because first he he he, did, he he was walking around just out in the public. No one saw him or anything. But as soon as I was talking, then all the Should press I turn a little more. Uh, no, it's fine. You know, then, then, then all the press was like you know surrounding him, but he didn't talk to anyone else but me. And then yeah. I said, and then he said, "You go with your questions." I was like, "Yes, yeah. sir, I am." That was funny. And and then he walked off. And he he ignored the rest of the press. That was great. And then you interviewed Chris Hedges. Yeah, yeah, I did, I, yeah. I did interview Chris Hedges too. Yep. Was, yeah. Thank you for reminding me. The, but but yeah, also yeah, also yeah, one yeah, other thing ahead. here too. Yeah. Because th- this is sort of like a Forrest Gump kind of thing. I interviewed another person too at the Social 2017 event at McCormick Place. His name was John Carlos. You might know that same John Carlos as the individual uh, who uh, participated in the 1968 Olympics. Oh, right. We didn't know who he was. I, I know. I really and he feel- was so touched that we cared about him not knowing who he was. I, I, I really feel embarrassed because here's the thing. <laughs> uh, John Carlos, we love you, man. But here's the thing. Here, here's, here, here's how I single him out for an interview, right? So Daniel and I were thinking, can we get one more interview? This is when we were out there still doing field reporting. By the right? way, social event, some of the most hostile people to media we've ever been to. The interviews we spoke to. The though, interviews were great. Yeah, yeah. But everyone, like majority people did, did, did not want to talk. And we've to had us. more freedom at Trump conferences. Y- yeah, that's really saying a lot. So John, John Carlos, um, he, was, he, was, he was about to sit down on the couch and he accidentally he hit, hit the head. back of the head. I was like, oh, hey, man, are you OK? Yeah. And he says, oh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm OK. I didn't know who he was at the time. And, and, and he said, well, who are you guys? Because he saw we had camera gear. And I was like, well, we're hard lens media. We're an independent media network here in the city of Chicago. And he says, oh, well, what are you here for? We're here interviewing people. But I said, well, some, a lot of people don't want to talk to us. I'll talk to you. Yeah. And, and I remember we asked him for his name and title. We didn't want to give a title away. Yeah. And, 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 he, was like, really and, he, and, and, and he said, look my name up. And I was like, oh, because, uh, again, I was wet behind the ears, folks. Embarrassing moment. I know. 
But uh, <laughs> John Carlson said, hey, he tapped me on the shoulder like, hey, I like the work that you're doing. Look my name up. Then you'll know. I was like, and I had to call Daniel like, Daniel, I spoke to John Carlson. He's an Olympian. He's, an Olympian. He's like, what? I was like, type his freaking name in your goddamn computer right goddamn now, man. Yeah. <laughs> and so I'll jump off that real quick. So what you just saw me do for a little bit earlier, that's the setup we ended up having to go with. We have... We, can we turn off the camera, the screen right now? The green screen? Um, wait a second. So, there you go. So we can turn, there you go. We can turn it back on now. So what we realized we had to do with, again, this is not one of the thousand things we had to figure out was, how do you make this look like that? And, well, we tried first with webcams. First iteration. Didn't work. Webcams kept getting screwed up because we are plugging in too many webcams in the computer. Yeah. And so we eventually settled on this security camera that has an HDMI that has a hundred foot cable running all the way through the entire studio to our window. So yeah. it is again, this is genuinely our view. It's just from that room. You know, I've I've tried to reach out to Chris Hedges. Uh, unfortunately, I, I I think my emails just get lost in his mail. But uh, Chris Hedges, Dr. Cornell West, you're always welcome to be on Hardlands Media. So there we go. So the, yeah. So the only reason I bring that up is I see the comments. It's not an illusion. This is a genuine view from the studio. Yes, that it's is just, live. It's just that in. side. That is it, exactly what it looks like out in the city as we're doing the show right now. So it looks like that outside. It's just on that side of the building. And now we got the Sears Tower, John Hancock Building, Trump Tower, which is magnificent in the background, too. And uh, so, yeah. Uh, so there we yeah. go. And so it's like this. These are the components that run this studio. It's a lot. We put just a ridiculous amount of thought into every single possible. So like, here's another one I can show you. So, you know, we have like people that want to come in and they want to do a podcast style. Yeah. And they like, they all say the same thing. I don't want this table like this. Mm -hmm. I want it turned. Well, table moves. Tables on. Yeah. Tables on. Yeah. Wheels. Yeah. yeah tab uh, tables on. Wheels. Pull it back. To yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> I'm gonna, there we go. Gonna move. Hold on. There we go. Good. There we go. I think I'm set. Okay. There, there we go. Magnificent. Incredible. So, I'm, yeah, no, Kit's going through all the wonderful people we've talked to. I'm going off through the wonderful things we've built. Yeah, uh, Jimmy Door. Uh, we had also, again, shout out to all of our colleagues, too, in independent media, such as Nico House, uh, of Mikasu Casa Network, Slow News Day, Convo mm -hmm. Couch, Frank Analysis, Jackson Hickel, Jimmy Door, Graham Elwood, Ron Placone, Lee Camp, the entire people at RT America. Shout out to Revolution Blackout Network and their entire crew. Uh, I mean, at this point, everyone's been doing phenomenal work. And, you know, we're not done yet. Oh, yeah, literally. Like, okay, so see, kids, of course, keep talking about the people and they keep talking about things. So, like, one thing we're about to add to the studio okay, cool. now that things are terrible right now is we're adding overhead lighting right up above us so that the green screen's a little clearer so that when we do this, it doesn't show as much. And there's a little less of a halo on our heads. Mm. It's never an end. It's, there's never it's, there's never an end to this process. We're always trying to make it better. And the big thing is um, that we're trying to build, which is our community center, which is our next yeah. jump, really, is, is that is... Everything that you see done on Hard Lens, everything that you guys do as patrons and everything, not just makes Hard Lens possible, it allows us to test all of these features and operate them so that when people in the city come by and they want to do something here, they know that we know how to do it. And that's because of you guys. We, uh, like, when uh, we, we were talking with Facebook, but we, like, from a technical side, Hard Lens is our cutting edge channel. Yeah. It's where we put all the coolest new features and stuff in, and we test it out so that everyone else can use it. Yep. And that's what we're trying to do here. And we're not going to stop. We're going to take over that city right behind us. And then we're going to make Chicago the new media center of this country. We're not going to stop here. Harlan's media is going to take over. And we invite all of you to come along with us. So there we go. We got such an awesome crew here. We got Bobby Yaga Preppers' congratulations, five years Hard Lens yeah, Media. Thank you. Uh, we're still going to keep on pushing forward and no one's going to stop us. And also, I'm going to address Leo because I think it's a fair point. He's saying don't sell out. The entire business model that we've built doesn't take outside investment and it doesn't, we, we don't have the ability to sell. Everything is grassroots. Everything we have 
has been built from scratch. We've never taken out a loan to run this place. We've never taken investment, and we won't. Everything is organically funded. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there we go. And uh, a lot of sacrifice. Shout out to our family members and friends that have supported us, too. There were a lot of people who said we couldn't do it. And five years. Yeah. You think we're done after this? No, 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 no. It's crazy. Just like I'm from a technical end. There's no one in the Midwest that does OBS to anywhere near the extent that we do. Yeah. No one. (laughs) We're the only place in the entire Midwest that offers the ability to do live streaming in this way. Yep. So there we go. That's the way that's what we pawn. This is again one in a hundred thousand or one in fifteen. Yeah, on my count right now. And ideally, yes, I'm seeing someone uh, AG saying Kit's hair will be down to. I am trying to grow out my all my long hair. I'm going to have long, beautiful, pretty hair. That's what I'm going to try and do. If everyone remembers that Sasquatch reference, yes, I'm going to have keep on growing my long hair because thankfully I got my dad's genes. I think at this point because baldness does run in my family. And I think I got my dad's blood. It was part of not, you know, because everyone my mom's follicles, side. really. Yeah, it's follicles. So there you go. So there you go. So may 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 it stay long and beautiful. So there you go. Uh, so there you go. I'm gonna grow my beard out too. I'm gonna be have 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 a have a rock star kind of kind of look. So there we go. So grateful to have everyone here, uh, and we're grateful to have all the support. Yeah, it's a it's a big deal for us to have been. Yeah. And it's like technically like Hardlands has been in operation over 6 years. But like we had to like make a line where we're like okay, this is when we started and mm-hmm. April 1st. It was is when we got our it was when we got our uh, we had a very nice we had a, a non-profit organization of lawyers rate right together. Yeah. Our our an incorporator the Hardlands and 99 perspectives and that's when we got the paperwork. Yeah. And we thought that yeah, this seems like a reasonable yeah. Starting point. Yeah. Is when we got the April paperwork. 1st. Yeah. April 1st. So April 1st is our can- uh, official canon birthday. May the God Emperor protect us. May the un may the unofficial saints of Hardlands Media 99 Perspective Studio, Macho Man Randy Savage, Julius Caesar, mm. and Alphonse Capone, who And Augustus Caesar. And Augustus Caesar, yes. And Alexander the Great. Alexander the Great, yes, sure. But I just want to point out... Technically Ramses, then, because, you know... Yeah, 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 there we go. But also, I want to add in... Frederick the Great. Yes, Alphonse Capone, though. Catherine the Great. He did nothing wrong. All right, all this stuff about him being part of some outfit. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He was a legitimate businessman. Whoa, 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 whoa. So, as we wrap things up, I want to just say thank you so much for joining us for our fifth anniversary. Looking forward to... Future parties with all of you. Thank Please you. Please join the Patreon. We yes. really need people. Thank you so much. We we do appreciate all the support to all the people that have been with us from the beginning, to all the people we've interviewed, to all the people we've collaborated with, uh, doing content and so much more. Thank you for your trust in us. We're not going to stop. We're going to keep on pushing forward. Heartlands Media is not going anywhere. And we're going to have a big announcement probably in the two-thirds into the month. Yeah, something like That's that. Gonna be, it's going to be a lot of big changes, but it's going to go right in line right. with everything we've always done. But we're going to end this segment here. I just want to say Harlan's Me is going to be live every Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. We're live on YouTube, Odyssey, Rockfin, and Twitch. Please consider being a Patreon supporter. Patreons are keeping us live. Chicago Corn will be live tonight at 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. But FaZe, we got to deliver the Friday message. <laughs>